From late July to early August, consecutive floods have hit Beijing, Hebei, and the northeast region. Up until now, the floods flowing from upstream into the Hai River in the North China region have not fully receded. In the severely affected city of Baoding in Hebei Province, areas throughout Zhuzhou and Bazhou are still submerged. This footage, taken by a netizen from an aeroplane on August twenty-third, captures the scene of the flood storage area in Bazhou. In the video, villages and farmlands below resemble a vast ocean. This is a village in Zhuzhou County in Hebei. The footage reveals that most parts of the village are still underwater. This is a high river. On the morning of August twenty-first, a video uploaded by a netizen showed large-scale silt-clearing equipment still operating in the village. Some streets remained in chaos. A group of villagers was trying to comfort an elderly victim who was crying. He said that, at over seventy years of age, this was the first time he had experienced such a major flood, which stripped him of everything. While the victims were still reeling from the loss of their homes and possessions, from August the twenty-first, a new deluge of rainfall began in the area. Videos uploaded by netizens showed that on August twenty-first, Hebei was hit again by heavy rainfall. Streets just cleaned were once again inundated. Unfortunately, Zhuzhou, previously designated as a flood discharge area to protect Beijing and Xiong'an, faced another round of flooding. Homes already in disrepair were again attacked by the floods, and streets became rivers. The helpless villagers could only watch the surging waters flow past their homes. On August twenty-third, Laishui County in Baoding City also suffered a heavy rain attack, accompanied by hail. The intense rainfall also triggered flash floods. In Laishui County, a landslide occurred in Fushankou Village. On August twenty third, one of the most severely affected areas in the last flood, Yeshampo National Park in Laishui County, was hit again by the roaring waters. Villagers who hadn't even recovered from the previous flood had their homes inundated again. The three-year pandemic has already drained us. We've just managed to get by, hoping to live better days, only to have the floodgates opened again, taking away all our assets. We became disaster victims, refugees. The moment we stepped into our homes, we believed the government wouldn't let us suffer. But in the end, they told us this is a flood discharge area and wouldn't compensate or care for anything. It's what they say upstairs, but who are they? How would we know? Now, with thunderstorms again, how many are like me, unable to sleep through the night due to the thunder? The major floods in early August, caused by official flood discharge, have led to severe disasters for a large number of people in Zhuzhou and Bazhou. The resettlement of disaster victims and the financial support for villagers in the flood discharge areas have not been properly resolved. The financial support promised by the authorities has also left the victims dissatisfied, leading to frequent protests by locals in an attempt to defend their rights. On the early morning of August twenty-third, villagers from Jingjia Bao Village in Bazhou City, dissatisfied with the compensation, protested at the reception building where the Bazhou Municipal Government's relocation team is located, smashing its entrance. A circulating online video shows a large number of victims gathering in front of the reception building at night. They are trying to seek an explanation from the officials. Amidst the darkness, 
Clanging sounds echoed as several men hurled items at the door, shouting, "Come out!" Another video, also taken in the early hours of August 23rd, showed disgruntled villagers in a candlelight vigil sitting quietly outside the door of the reception building. They are upset over the 1,000 yuan relocation support offered by the authorities. Photos reveal a scene of chaos with numerous water bottles and what appears to be broken glass littering the ground. Another video posted on 23rd of August captures a sea of protests in front of the Jingjia Bao Village's Comprehensive Service Department. In addition to the dissatisfaction of the disaster victims in Bazhou, there were online reports on August 23rd that a large number of victims of Rouyang County in Hebei Province gathered in front of the county government building. They are also demanding redress and compensation for the damage caused by the flood discharge. Online messages allegedly from a disaster victim in Bazhou describe how their family of eight lost their home due to the flood discharge. Everything in our house was ruined, he said. This victim claims to have received a 1,000 yuan housing support from the national government on August the 17th. He sarcastically added, "Thank you so much to the government. This is something that other countries can never do. I feel so fortunate to have been born on Chinese soil." According to official state media, the early August floods affected 5% of Hebei's 74 million population, roughly 3.7 million people. Dozens lost their lives. Over 40,000 houses collapsed, and 155,000 houses were damaged, with an estimated economic loss of about 100 billion yuan. Not only did counties and cities in Hebei suffer from these devastating natural floods, but they also endured man-made disasters from flood discharges. On August the first, Li Guoying, the Minister of Water Resources, demanded absolute safety for key protection targets like the Xiong'an New Area and Beijing Daxing Airport. The Communist Party Secretary of Hebei, Ni Yuefeng, emphasized the commitment to serve as the moat for the capital. Following these directives, seven flood storage areas in Hebei were activated, causing catastrophic flooding in places like Zhuozhou that should not have flooded. These so-called flood retention areas were originally not meant for housing or farming. Dr. Wang Weiluo, a hydrology expert residing in Germany, explained that after a major flood in the Haihe River Basin in 1963, there was a long drought period over the next few decades. Seeing these retention areas unused, local governments and planning departments began to utilize them, initially for farming and later for building socialist-style rural communities. Yet, human plans often fall short of nature's unpredictability. The government's misjudged schemes planted the seeds for future calamities. This year, torrential rains soaked Beijing, Tianjin and Hebei, causing floods. The flood retention areas bore the brunt, becoming pawns that the authorities were willing to sacrifice. The authorities were responsible for this man-made disaster, but failed to provide proper relief and resettlement for the victims. Videos reveal that victims in Yongqing County of Hebei Province were housed in cabins previously used for pandemic control. Moreover, some villagers in Georgia reported receiving relief goods that had expired a week ago. Shockingly, some victims even received pesticides as part of the disaster relief. With crops completely devastated, one wonders the usefulness of such aid. With the waters receding, the victims face homes destroyed by floods, lost properties and ruined crops. Their immediate concerns are rebuilding their homes, resuming their daily lives and obtaining timely and reasonable financial support from the government. Recent online information indicates that in this disaster, each deceased person receives 20,000 yuan, about 2,700 US dollars, from the authorities. These insured can receive 50,000 yuan, about 6,800 US dollars, in support. A collapsed house gets compensated with 40,000 yuan, about 5,500 US dollars. Household properties are compensated up to 5,000 yuan, about 687 US dollars mainly covering appliances, furniture and other household items. Devastated farmland receives 9 yuan per mu, which is approximately $7.44 US per acre. 
Reportedly, this financial support standard is based on a disaster relief policy issued by the Baoding City Development and Reform Commission on August 11. The policy also states that emergency life assistance should be no less than 30 yuan per person per day for a period not exceeding 15 days. Transitional assistance refers to the aid provided to victims who have lost their homes, means of livelihood, and lack the capability to self-recover. For those affected by Level 1 and 2 financial natural disasters, the aid is no less than 30 yuan and half kilo of grain per person per day for a period not exceeding three months. Despite such low support standards, victims cannot easily access these funds and are subjected to rigorous reviews. An online user has uploaded a complex disaster information form from the flood-hit region of Zhuozhou. The form includes questions on whether the individual is a member of the Communist Party, belongs to the two committees, Village Party Committee and Village People's Committee, or is a village representative. Shockingly, it also asks for records of past petitions, criminal history, how hard it will be to appease the victim, as well as financial support sought, and the views on the disaster. Observers have raised concerns over the implications of this information collection. Does it mean that those within the party or working for the government are entitled to more timely and substantial support? Conversely, would those who have petitioned in the past or opposed the party be denied financial support? Many netizens have openly criticised that the only disaster-related item on the entire form is where it says, support you are currently seeking. Yet, in fine print at the bottom, it states that this is just a preliminary questionnaire and will not be the basis for final support. Beijing-based independent commentator Pen Ding Ding commented on the property damage assessment during floods. He suggested that local officials have the ultimate power over disaster victims' personal interests, subjecting them to potential exploitation. He said, When doing the flood assessment, the local government holds enormous power, almost absolute. This inevitably leads to severe corruption and abuse of power. Ordinary people are like meat on a chopping board at the mercy of these officials. Pem believes the assessment of water damage should be conducted by professional third-party organisations and, if necessary, by two independent institutions, ideally appointed by the victims themselves, from different provinces, to ensure impartiality and safeguard the rights and interests of the victims. Recent observations by political analysts highlight a pattern in the CCP approach to crisis management. In moments of disaster, the CCP frequently employs rhetoric emphasising the bigger picture and the importance of the greater good. This strategic communication seems designed to rally the public, encouraging them to prioritise collective goals over individual concerns. But critics argue that once the immediate crisis subsides and the need for public cohesion is reduced, the party's tone can shift becoming less accommodating and even antagonistic towards the very citizens it sought to unify. Numerous flood victims have complained online about the local government's stringent property damage rating assessments. One netizen joked sadly, For flood compensation, there are only two things that aren't compensated. This isn't compensated and that isn't compensated. Essentially, nothing is compensated. <laughs> The evaluation expert is here, and the most repeated line is, is, this isn't our concern, nor is that. Right now, the appliances are just left there. Should we do something with them or leave them untouched? Can someone suggest what to do? Look at this floor. It's damaged, the walls have cracks and are soaked. Water has entered the house. This wall is even leaning outward. After a lengthy assessment, the government graded it as level C damage. The house of this disaster victim from Dingxing County in Hebei has suffered severe damage. Yet after the official assessment, they were only compensated 3,000 yuan, equivalent to 412 US dollars. This following video shows the government evaluators registering the damaged property in the victims' homes. Many items are excluded from the calculations. <laughs> Uh 
，中午还有一个那个壁挂轮，你们来算了。Look at this wall. It's even more severely cracked. I don't understand how the government makes their evaluations. If it were your parents or your children living in such a house, would you feel at ease? During the registration, this isn't counted, and that isn't either. But nothing can be salvaged. The sofa, bed, cabinets, computer, all of them cost money when bought, didn't they? According to a Voice of America report on the 23rd of August, China's current support standards for flood retention areas still follow the guidelines issued on May 27, 2000, by then Premier Zhu Rongji. The support offered to victims in Hebei even falls short of the standard that was set 23 years ago. Moreover, the government's use of the term support has been deemed inaccurate. Dr. Wang Wei Luo argued that the word support in these contexts is misleading. It shouldn't be support, but rather compensation. When support might suggest the government's benevolence, compensation signifies a legal error on the part of the government. It implies the government's planning mistakes and their obligation to amend their wrongdoing. Dr. Wan emphasized the CCP's mistake in designing so many residences and villages within these flood retention areas. This was the case in regions such as Bazhou and Zhuozhou. He stated, if there is an error in the planning, you must compensate the affected parties or else there will be no respect for the law in the future. During a comparison, Dr. Wong cited the German practice. If government error causes flooding of civilian homes and property damage, the government will compensate with new houses, including relocation costs. Temporary hotel stays and other associated fees are also footed by the government. Zhao Lanjian, a former Chinese journalist now residing in the U.S., commented that flooding was a direct result of the Chinese government's mishandling. He insisted that the government must fully compensate the flood victims. Furthermore, he expressed skepticism regarding whether the Chinese government's compensation pledges would indeed be honoured, noting the government's historical inconsistency and lack of commitment as highlighted by the Chinese idiom Chu Hu Suan Zhang, meaning settling scores at a later time. Observers pointed out that the Chinese government's decision to use the price index from over two decades ago as a benchmark for compensating today's flood victims is a grossly unjust act. Consider this, 2,000 yuan from 23 years ago is worth at least 10 times that amount today. Fen Chongyi, the Associate Professor of Chinese Studies at the University of Technology, Sydney, said that using disaster support standards from 23 years ago is utterly unjust and shameless, especially for those who sacrifice their personal benefits for the greater good. He remarked, it's insulting to the intelligence of people worldwide when the government dusts off such outdated benchmarks for compensation. He also noted that financial woes plague both the central and local governments in China. Some local budgets are in deficit, with mounting debts. Confronted with such a significant disaster, local finances are ill-equipped to handle it. This leads to bureaucratic measures and the reliance on outdated standards to appease the public.